All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So by now, you probably already know that if you have the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, it comes with a $300 Chase travel credit that you can use every year. If you're not familiar with it, that's perfectly fine because that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So did you know that there's actually 12 different usage that count towards this $300 travel credit? And most importantly, there are actually five different usage that it might seems like it should be related to travel, but actually does not count as the travel credit. And you're going to want to watch until the end because I'm going to teach you ways to turn some of those five that don't count into the ones that do count. So let's get right into it. But before we start, my name is Johnny. I talk about points, loyalty program, and just simple travel hacks to elevate your travel. So if you find these kind of content useful and helpful, please give us a like and follow the channel. Thank you so much. So 12 usage that do count towards the $300 Chase travel credit. The first two is actually really obvious. It's airline charges and hotel charges. So airline charges think your airfare, uh, your seat upgrade, uh, or your luggage fees. Uh, for hotel charges, your room rate, taxes, uh, if you have a late checkout fee, or uh, let's say you want to roll away the extra fee for that, those also count as travel. And the third one's quite obvious too. It literally has the word travel in it, and that's travel agent. So think uh, online travel agency like Expedia, Booking.com, Hotel.com. Everything that you charge on there all counts towards the $300 travel credit. So number four is home share and time share. So think uh, Airbnb, VRBO. Those are still quite straightforward. Uh, number five is car rental. A lot of people, especially with uh, little kids, they like to take road trips. So car rental is a big one as well. Those also count. Number six is cruise lines. Uh, there's a lot of people who like to take cruises. There are a lot of cruise deals out there. And so cruise lines also counts for those $300. Number seven is taxis and ride share. So regular taxi or Uber and Lyft. And with the Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you actually get extra bonus if you take a Lyft. So Lyft would be my choice if you're actually using the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. And number eight, no, we're really getting into it. Number eight, train ticket. Train ticket also counts as travel credits. And number nine, bus ticket. That one also counts. And number 10, that's the one that really, really messed with people's head because uh, I bet not a lot of people think about that. And that's bridge toll and roll toll. So if you're here in California, Northern California, San Francisco Bay Area, if you cross the Golden Gate Bridge or the Bay Bridge, your bridge toll counts. And number 11 is parking lot. So let's say if you work in a city a lot and you need to pay for parking, then that would be a way to get some free parking out of it. Uh, number 12 is campground. So if you want to rent a campsite, go camping, then those charges will also count towards the $300 travel credit. Now, I've never used a campground thing myself, but according to Chase.com on their terms, campground is one of them. And I'm actually going to put that link down in the description box so you, you, can, you guys can uh, take a look yourself. Along with that link, I'm going to put a link to my referral for the Chase Sapphire Reserve because right now there's actually a elevated bonus of 75,000 points. So use the link only if it makes sense to you. Okay, now let's get into the most important part, which is the five usage that I think related to travel, but actually does not count towards the 300 travel credit. Okay, so number one is theme park tickets. So think Disneyland, Universal Studio, you're traveling there, you're going in. It does not count as travel. Same as ski lift tickets. So you might think that, oh, you know, going to Colorado or Lake Tahoe for your ski trip, that's travel for you. But those tickets actually don't count as travel. So don't use it. Another one is also tricky is restaurants at hotels. So think if you eat at a restaurant, but it's located in the hotel. So you might think that, oh, okay, so the hotel is going to charge me for those meals. No, actually those charges are often charged as dining because the uh, restaurant charges you independently. Okay. So number four is airlines and hotel gift cards. So those often are not directly issued uh, or processed by the airline or the hotel. So that's why the gift cards don't often count towards 
travel credits. And number five is when you need to purchase points, often it is run by points.com. When points.com process your purchase, those actually don't count towards airlines or hotel, which means those don't count towards travel. So hence, you won't get the $300 back. Okay, so how can we make some of those count towards the $300 travel credit? So for number one and number two, theme park tickets and ski lift ticket. Try to see if you can actually purchase those through an online travel agency. So think Expedia, Booking.com, Hotel.com. Uh, sometimes you'll have a package with hotel and theme park tickets. Then those charges will actually be processed by the travel agent. That means it actually counts towards the travel credit. Same as lift ticket, it might be a little more difficult, but I think sometime at a, a hotel, a ski resort uh, where there's lodging, uh, you can purchase a room and ski lift ticket. And if you can actually charge it to the room, then it will actually count as a hotel charge, which then count towards the $300 travel credit. Uh, number three as well, a uh, restaurant at a hotel. So if you are actually staying at the hotel and you eat at the restaurant, don't just pay with your car thinking that, oh yeah, that will be uh, count towards travel. Always remember to charge your meal to the room. For example, earlier this year, I went to Las Vegas and stay at the Skyloft at MGM and I went to eat at one of the restaurants there. Instead of charging directly onto my credit card, I asked them to charge my meal to the room so I can have the cost coded as travel instead of dining. All right, thank you so much for watching this video, especially you watch all the way until the end. Leave a comment down below. Let me know that you actually watch it until the end. If you have any questions, also leave a comment down below. I will answer that personally. And as always, like our video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to learn more about the elevated sign-up bonus for both the Chase Sapphire Prefer and Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you want to click on the link over here. Okay, and I'll see you guys next time. Expect new video coming out very soon. Thanks again. Bye.